G'day everyone and welcome to today's video. We got the recent announcements in regards to the Monarch releases. I've got them up on the screen over there. <laughs> uh, so the countdown, March previews, 10 days away before we start seeing some previews, yeah? Pre-release, 28 days away for first ed. Release of first ed is 35 days away and 70 days from the unlimited release. Now, if I was to look at that board again, that uh, pre-release of the 28 days, actually, if you're in the premium pre-release, we're only 21 days away, three weeks. We got one of those pre premium events and tickets are going like crazy. So make sure you're buying your tickets. There are only 48 spots. And honestly, I think 24 of them, so half are already gone. So you need to get on there and make sure you are part of this event. So the reason for the video is to why Fab is the game you need to be playing and why it's gonna survive. All right, my history with Fab got into it very early. I was part of um, the group that used to go to another game store that has since closed down. They were called Untapped Games. Carl, the owner, now plays here as well. He got Fab in. We played it and I was instantly hooked along uh, with Luke and the other um, guys and gals. So I contacted LSS with my interest in running the games and really supporting it. And after playing the game, talking to them about their enthusiasm about games getting back into the stores and being in there and then going over to New Zealand, meeting them, meeting James White and really listening to his interviews and talking to him in person. I was right behind um, LSS and Flesh and Blood, right. to be yeah it is a club where people come and game you know and if you want to support this area you buy from our store you know you want to keep this going this place is magical even if I say so myself yeah I am the owner I'm gonna be a bit biased but I know where my roots came from and what I wanted to envision I don't want to be in a space where I'm all crowded playing games it's not as enjoyable yeah the games are enjoyable but I want that total experience I want the experience of coming there meeting people that I love to hang out with all the time you know what this place is just about always open and people come all the time I just love it there's space to sit around, lounge around, and just enjoy various games. If you, if what's downstairs doesn't interest you, go upstairs, and goodness knows there's a whole range, a plethora of games to play. That's what 
Flesh and Blood is all about. It's about getting the games back in the store. They talk about the title Flesh and Blood being, you know, Flesh and Blood being there and part of it and not just online. And when we're through all this COVID overseas, we're going to be seeing a massive influx of people into this game. And I'm going to discuss now why this game is going to survive over many of the others, even with the big three that are in there. And I've got my notes here. Let's just go through with it because I'm in the thick of it. I am, you know, I'm a retailer. I'm buying from the distributors. I'm seeing what's happening in the back ends. And it's pretty good for you to also get an insight into this. So let's just go over the big one, Magic the Gathering. What the hell are these people doing? Look, if they're not taking some political stance and making people know about it, and you know what? Politics doesn't belong in gaming. Just keep it out. You can have your political views, do whatever you want. Keep it out of the game. But they're doing that. They've also gone on to a money front. Now, if you listen to Alpha Investments, he's talked about it, how they're going to Amazon's, but they've removed direct sales to brick and mortar stores, yeah? So we no longer deal with wizards. We can contact them on some Facebook chat group or uh, message group, which is absolute rubbish. Yeah, they might get back to us, but what they've done is they've taken the direct sales away from brick and mortar. So now we have to go through distributors. What does that mean? That means there's now a middleman in there buying product, getting a profit for themselves and then selling on to us. What does that mean? Higher prices for you, the consumer. So no longer are boxes selling to you at maybe 130, 140, 150, even 160. Now we're looking at 175, 180, 200. And the rubbish that they're going through with their various set boxes, booster boxes, collector boxes, theme boosters. Oh, why are people playing the game? All right. You know, this really gets my heart because I played Magic way back when. But I've said it before, if Magic was to be created this day and age, it would not survive. Its energy system just would not survive. You, Playing turn after turn of drawing land or no land and not being able to play just would not cut it. And we do have, you know, we love the game of Magic. It was the beginning. It's got so many memories and people have so many memories of playing Magic because it's what they came into play. And that's fine. I just agree with a whole bunch of other people in saying that they are just not caring about the consumer anymore other than the fact of those consumers that get online, play their games, and that's what's happening. People are playing online now, they're getting their cards for free online, or maybe they throw some money online, and if there are buying cards, they're going through your Amazons or anything else. Like, honestly, the game for in-store play is dying. I really appreciate all the guys that play Magic here, the modern players. You know, we've got a strong modern scene. They don't want to be buying new sets or new cards. They're happy with their play because it's just getting too hard to manage. And then I've got my Friday group who are my draft group and they love the product and that. But as a brick and mortar store, I can't be bringing in stacks of product. I bring in just enough to help create a scene for the draft guys, pretty much. The modern guys really don't want much and they play commander after the fact as well so that's the reality of magic guys brick and mortar stores are going to start moving away from magic reducing their orders it's already happening we're not going to see stores bringing in stacks of this product half the stuff is allocated like this is ridiculous look at this guys take a look I don't even know where this came from. This was allocated to us. You could not even uh, purchase it. Now, recently they've said that there's going to be another printing of Time Spiral. This box sells for $350 to $400. Honestly, how do you keep up with the hobby of the game? At, like These prices are going crazy. And that's just for the base set. There is no first edition unlimited print or anything. That's the printing. 
if you missed it, that's it, guys. Go on eBay, look at, start looking at five, six hundred dollar boxes. It's absolutely ridiculous, and I'm really fired up about this because, like I said, I've got a history with Magic, and I really don't like what they're doing. If anything, if I'm going to be buying Magic cards, it's going to be the older cards because of my memories of the cards, and many of the cards they've um, either banned or they've redone, you know, repictured or just. Yeah, they don't exist anymore, so I want to get those cards myself for, you know, just um, collect the things, I guess, for myself. Let's move on to Pokemon, another game which I've played. Pokemon for myself is non-interactive, great for the kids if they want to play their own game, but you feel like someone's playing their game before you get a turn to play your game, and at the end of the, the day, whoever got to play their own better game with no interactivity wins. But I ask you, who's playing Pokemon anymore? Is anyone? Is is it more than just the occasional kid that comes in with his mum or dad to some retail store and buys some packs, sits down, maybe plays with another kid? I don't know. As soon as you get Pokemon stock with the new stuff, we get the big buyers in. Kids can't afford it anymore. I, as a store, don't even open boxes anymore. Why would I? People come in, they buy the boxes, they leave, they either crack them on uh, channels or they keep them sealed. Or they crack them and put them in their folders for collector's sake to sell at a later time. But I'll tell you a reality of what's really happening. Brick and mortar stores are going to be taking this stuff, holding it for 3 months, 90 days and then re-putting it back on the shelves. Why is that? Because when we get it, we've got a recommended retail price of about 160, maybe 170. Pretty much as it's out, the market has pushed so hard that those boxes are really coming out at about 190, 200, 220 bucks. You put it away for three months, it's gonna be 280 in no time. And that's when they're going back on the shelves. How the hell is anyone supposed to do a hobby, a play hobby, when stores are getting in product, holding it, hiding it away, sorry we don't have it, then back on the shelves in three months time at a higher price for all the collectors just to swoop in, grab it, put in their nice little um, little acrylic boxes to show on Facebook, YouTube and everything like that, or to do on their streams and open them, all looking for their Charizards or whatnot, yeah? Or their fat Pikachus, like, how can that game keep going? It, it just can't. Yeah, you know, I am getting a bit fired up. Let's move on to Yu-Gi-Oh. I haven't played Yu-Gi-Oh, okay? But what I do know as a store is what I buy and what I sell. Yu-Gi-Oh only has a collector market for first edition. Anything after first edition, it's not worth getting in. It doesn't sell unless it's just for single packets. So mostly you're buying as much as you can to open up singles, either sell the singles or keep the sealed product and hope to goodness that it's a good set and people buy it. Now, if you're not fully into the Yu-Gi-Oh scene, you're buying blind. So you need to talk to your players if you're running a store to see what your players think of the upcoming sets if they're keeping up to date with it. Yes, the game is being played, but as a store owner after the initial sales, what is there with Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah? Now, you've got, they do have some good support, and I'll give that to Yu-Gi-Oh with the Lost Art promos, if the store can get them, and all their OTS packs if the store orders them as well, which they do have to pay for. So just think about that when it comes to you entering events, the store is actually paying for the promos that they give to you as well. So they've got to factor that into the costs. At least the game is being played. We're starting to see a resurgence after COVID of that game being played. But once again, these things sell out. After the first edition, you need to get enough in in order to sell it and then we move on to the next one because after first edition, that unlimited is not worth stocking. That's reality with Yu-Gi-Oh! So as you can see out of the top three, Yu-Gi-Oh! is probably the only one really getting major play with Magic the Gathering really pissing off their older players who are moving more to modern and with some sticking to 
the draft format, but I guess that's the way they want to go and that's the way they see their business model. If you want to know more about that, just hit, get on to Alpha Investments. He really talks about it, makes puts it up there. So what's the next one's coming up? We've got Dragon Ball and Digimon. We started this business on Dragon Ball as one of the major ones and it's still pretty good with its singles. As a store, we try and order a lot of this product and we've been getting cut on product. They're under supply and then they're not reprinting. And that's the whole element with Dragon Ball. They're pissing off a lot of people. A lot of people got out of Dragon Ball, but now there is a resurgence in it from collectors. Everyone thinks they can just PSA grade or BGS grade their stuff. And Dragon Ball has some of the most beautiful cards out there. Now Digimon is hitting the scene being I call it the Pokemon for adults, I guess. And that's hitting the scene, but that's suffering from the same problems. We've got limited supply. It is from the same company, Bandai. Whether they're doing that on purpose or not, I don't know, but they're bringing out a certain amount of product. They're undersupplying it, creating a high demand. Everyone's going for it. I can get boxes in. I sell them for 130. In reality, by the time they get to the person, they're easily 200 to $300. You know, a store could just get in the product, hold it for a month, and then resell it for a huge profit. We've got stores out there doing that. I'm not going to name them, but it's very easy to do, yeah. I even have gone into a stage where I'm not even putting the stuff up on the website anymore. I know that my stuff is getting cut, so I'm ordering as much as possible. I'm getting as much of a... Um, a determination on how much I'm getting and I'm keeping that for my local player base because that's too important to let go it would be ridiculous for me to sell them online only for my local players not to be able to get stock so I only look after the local scene now in regards to Digimon Dragon Ball I'm trying to find even more product to get it out there in the scene I still have I don't like the way that Dragon Ball has gone in regards to their games. I don't like these second turn kills. I don't like these black decks or these double strike decks that are jumping around killing people before they even untap their first bit of energy. It's just ridiculous. And until that changes and goes back to maybe three, four, maybe even a fifth turn kill, you know, I'm pretty much out of it. But I still love to support the scene. They've got the best cards on the market for how beautiful they are. And Digimon cards are just cute as so that's where Bandai is sitting at the moment they've got the strong play scenes but they're really stuffing up on the limited supply getting on to Final Fantasy I don't think Square Enix understands just what they really
where does that leave us? That leaves us with, like, I don't know about um, the other card games that are going out there. I'm not going to tackle uh, Vampire or anything like that. We know they're lower games that we're building up, rebuilding up the life. suits the investor who also wants that card to either keep or sell yeah and they can sell it to investors who don't actually play the game or can't play it so that's where we're at with that stores are going to back flesh and blood stores that missed out on a premier event are going to ask why and then go and do everything they can to earn those premier events like we've done yeah so it's going to get a lot of support. The LSS guys are geniuses. They know where it's at. They know where this type of stuff sits. It sits at the heart of most gamers where they just want to go in. They want to play not just their mates, but different people as well. Something I think a lot of the other card games have missed. Magic the Gathering, I feel, is moving in a different direction. Pokemon can't get past the fact that the collectors are all over it. Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, they sit with their first set, but at least it's being played. Uh, Dragon Ball Digimon being played, so I feel that they're going to be the strong contenders. Final Fantasy, I really want to see that being taken off, but this is why Fab's going to survive. I think Fab's going to be climbing that scene. Honestly, personally, I'd like to see Fab well up there, and if Yu-Gi-Oh! or DBS or Digimon is close to your heart, I'm sorry, but my thoughts are Fab is going to take the place of Magic. We've got a lot of Magic players moving towards it, seeing the strategy in it, and the good games you can have with it. It's going to take time, yeah, but we... You know, Fab is making a mark. They're, going, they're saying that um, Monarch, everything revolves around Monarch. <sighs> yeah, it does, to a point. But it's a strong game as it is already. It's got a lot of support, and that's why it's going to survive, guys. So I've talked enough. These are dates. We're probably going to be doing a video every day with this countdown. I can't wait till the previews start coming out. Then we'll start doing videos on the previews. And as we see more cards, and when we get the pre-release handed out, we're going to be doing box openings, we're going to be doing live streams, so stay tuned for that. There's many more videos to come, including my 
ability or inability <laughs> to get various decks to work, okay? Have a great one, guys. See you on the next future videos. Hope this wasn't too long. See you all. Thank <laughs> you.